Yet another way to find delta H is to use bond energy values. This works because whenever you break a bond, that requires an input of energy. That's an endothermic process. When you form a new bond, energy will be released. That's an exothermic process. So you can estimate delta H for reaction by calculating the input of energy that it takes to break all the bonds, subtracting the release of energy when the new bonds are formed. So here's a chemical reaction. It's the combustion of methane CH4. This is the same reaction that takes place when you burn natural gas. You burn natural gas and it's going to produce a lot of heat. So we know that this should be an exothermic process. Delta H should be a negative number because we know heat should be released from this reaction. If you look at the starting materials, the reactants, we have to break four carbon-hydrogen bonds. And four carbon-hydrogen bonds, you can look up in a table that will tell you the energy that it takes to break each of those is 415 kilojoules. Then we look at the next reactant. We have two moles of oxygen where we have oxygen double bonded to another oxygen. Each O2 molecule contains one double bond and the coefficient of two means we have to break two of those bonds. So we can look up that value in a table and it's 495 kilojoules. If you sum together all of that input of energy that would require an input of 2,650 kilojoules of energy. Then on the product side, we look at the bonds that we're making. We're making two carbon-oxygen double bonds in the chemical carbon dioxide. And you look that up in a table, and each one of those releases 800 kilojoules of energy. Then we're also making two moles of water. Each water has two OH bonds, and that coefficient of two means we're forming a total of four OH bonds. And those bonds release 460 kilojoules when they're formed. The total amount of energy released is 3,440 kilojoules. So to find the overall delta H, we just take the input of energy, 2650, minus the output, 3440, which gives us a negative 790 kilojoules. That negative makes sense because we knew that this particular reaction releases energy rather than absorbs energy.